Mahjong, or Mahjong in Chinese, is more than just a game. It's an iconic symbol of Chinese culture known worldwide for its blend of skill, strategy, and luck. Despite being over 200 years old, the game still captivates players across geography, ethnicity, gender, culture, and generations, making it a connector for many diverse groups. That many people play Mahjong in this audience? Because that would make me so super happy Mahjong? right now. Clap. Its inspiration appears on fashion runways. And who can forget the iconic scene in Crazy Rich Asians? And if he chose his family, he might spend the rest of his life resenting you. The multi-sensory game is played with a set of 144 tiles marked by three different suits, namely Chinese characters, dots, and bamboo. Additionally, there are special tiles like dragons, winds, and flowers. Players take turns collecting and discarding tiles until they achieve a winning hand of 14 to 17 tiles with various combinations of triplets and runs. Mahjong's rich history is as fascinating as the game itself. Inspired by draw and discard card games that were popular at the time, it emerged in China's lower Yangtze Delta region in the mid to late 1800s and quickly became popular with the Qing court. The game also found its way into courtesan houses where men played while conducting business negotiations. Eventually, it landed in Shanghai, where cultures were intersecting in the city's international settlement. Mahjong caught the attention of foreigners who used it to cross the cultural divide. However, as it was often employed as a vehicle for gambling, it was frowned upon and even banned at times in China. Mahjong's introduction to the West is equally captivating. In the 1920s, Joseph Park Babcock, a Standard Oil executive who had worked in China and enjoyed playing the game, created a company to export Mahjong to America. In order to market Mahjong to white Americans, Babcock exploited the public's fascination with chinoiserie and tacked 2,500 years onto the game's history to portray it as an exotic and elite pastime of ancient Confucian origin. This allowed players to embrace the ideals of ancient China while rejecting Chinese immigrants who were viewed as unassimilable foreigners during a time of rampant anti-Chinese sentiment. He simplified the rules, too. Soon, other entrepreneurs saw the potential for huge profits and started producing their own sets and rules. Mahjong quickly became a craze in America and Europe and was played everywhere from living rooms to exclusive country clubs. It was mostly women who played, and it became a fashionable social diversion for housewives, military wives, and even several first ladies. Players would often dress up in elaborate Chinese-inspired costumes and serve presumed exotic Chinese snacks. The game became so popular that in 1923, Mahjong sets were China's sixth largest export to the U.S. Congress even imposed a tax on the imported set and global prices for cowbone used to make the tiles skyrocketed. I only played once with some Jewish friends in college. <laughs> Jewish mahjong. Not the same thing. Entirely different. Perhaps more than any other non-Chinese group, Jewish women adopted the game as their own. In the 1930s, four Jewish American women formed the National Mahjong League, standardizing the game by publishing uniquely American hands and rules differing somewhat from the traditional Chinese ones. In the 1950s and 60s, Jewish Americans formed a large middle class and leisure community. The game was taken to their summer vacations in the Catskills, where Mahjong groups were formed that continued to flourish after returning home. To this day, the largely Jewish National Mahjong League issues a new rule card every year. For many Asian Americans, playing Mahjong meant embracing their roots while being part of an American fad. During World War II, Mahjong was deemed non-political, so Japanese Americans were allowed to play in incarceration camps. This helped them pass time and built cohesion amidst disruption and exclusion. And families of immigrants separated and detained at Angel Island also played to ease their anxiety. Today, Mahjong remains a popular pastime in China and around the world, and a point of commonality across generations. The game also remains the bedrock of Asian American and Chinese diaspora culture. Over 40 variations of the game exist worldwide each tweaked to serve a specific geographic, culture, or familial purpose. 
Older adults often play the game for enjoyment, to keep up with traditions, and as a form of mental stimulation and memory training. As families used online gameplay to stay connected during the COVID-19 pandemic, a new generation is embracing Mahjong online and off, not only as a game, but also as a way to build communities and learn more about their own or another culture. In many ways, Mahjong continues to illuminate complex and significant societal constructs, promoting shared community experiences, subtly displaying social and economic class, and forming a bridge between generations. So, why not give Mahjong a try? You may find that this game, steeped in history and tradition, can be a source of entertainment and connection for you.